welcome back to the channel i hope you are all well now first of all thanks a lot we have surpassed a hundred subscribers which a few months ago i thought had never come so thanks to every one of you who has subscribed it does mean more than you can imagine so thanks a lot stick around we've got a lot of exciting content coming your way in the next couple of weeks especially building up to the Cheltenham Festival. I've got some exciting videos coming over the next few days which have been pre-recorded so there might be changes. I'm off to New York for a while but hopefully it'll be accurate by the time they come out and I've got some exciting bets whether it comes to the nap of the meat in the horse that you want to avoid and a few big priced horses in the handicap. So we'll get into that over the next couple of days but today we're going to have a look at the Gordon Elliott stable and just do a stable tour in general looking at the big horses that will be out come the Cheltenham Festival and the place to start and the horse to start I should say is Galvin in the Gold Cup he's as short as 7-2 to two to win the Gold Cup now at the start of the season I really don't think Gordon Elliott thought he had a Gold Cup horse on his hands like he did in the shape of Galvin who was all, all, always an improving horse. He ran very well in the National Hunt Chase at the festival last year. And you think he's got that course form and he's improved. He beat Aplutard by a short head under a Davy Russell masterclass over in Ireland. And that's probably the standout piece of form in the race. But there might just be a question mark over how seriously you do take that form in that race. I think Aplutard maybe wasn't a hundred percent and might have hit the front a bit too soon having come from off the pace under Rachel Blackmore and Davy Russell lifted this horse to get up just on the line. Whether this horse can continue this form and beat Aplutard again, well I might be a little bit questionable over that. I think Aplutard will take a step forward from his latest run and Aplutard was very good at Haydock at the start of the season. A little bit disappointing when beaten by Galvin. I don't think many people thought Aplutard would be beaten that day. Certainly not me who I actually had him in an accumulator I remember when he got chinned on the line which wasn't the best but I think Aplutard might be the better horse in time but Galvin he's got course form. He will stay all day does he have the pace for the Gold Cup? I think you do need some a yard of pace to get a tactical position. Does he have that? You're not sure, but you know one thing for sure is he'll be staying up that hill for sure. And if Davy Russell does keep the ride, which you assume he would, then he definitely would have every chance. On another note, Conflated, who won very impressively over in Ireland a couple of weeks ago for connections as well, will he head to the Gold Cup? I would be slightly concerned if he'd stay the three mile two furlong trip. He did win nicely over the three mile trip and there is question marks over the stamina. Well I don't think he was stopping that day in Ireland when Manella Indo was second. That's a very nice piece of form but maybe the Ryanair, an aggressive ride from the front, get him jumping well. I think that could be an alternative but at the end of the day I don't think he's going to be Alaho so why not just go for it in the Gold Cup. There's very few horses which can sustain that form in the Gold Cup over the years. So this might be the chance in maybe a not ideal renewal and he could have a chance if he goes. Would I be backing him? Probably not. And Galvin is definitely the more solid option but would he be winning it either? Well I don't think so but who knows. They both could run well and get close to the form for Gordon Elliott in the Gold Cup. <laughs> Also on the Friday, Gordon Elliott, I think that could be a good day for him. He runs Pied Piper in the Juvenile Triumph Hurdle. Now this horse beat Vauban, who's been hugely exciting and is a massive fan of mine. And then he followed that up and took a huge step forward when winning by nine lengths at Cheltenham. That was a demolition job. He didn't come off the bridle at all. The horses he beat, well... There probably wasn't world beaters in general. It was just the English juvenile, which aren't the strongest this year round. But his second favourite for the Triumph Hurdle, I think, is around 9-4 to four in places now. And for me, it just looks a two-horse race between Pied Piper and Vorb. And I think they are clear of the rest. Now, for the third best, you could pick one of five or six horses, which will fill the frame. But I'd be very surprised to see if Pied Piper and Vauban aren't a 1-2 for this race. They have looked so far clear. And that piece of form where Pied Piper beat Vauban by half a length has worked out very nicely with some of the horses in behind as well. But 
there is just a little question mark for me if Vauban has improved past Pied Piper since Pied Piper beat him by half a length. So I think maybe Pied Piper is another one for Gordon Elliott that's going to come run, run very well, I should say, but ultimately come second, I think. On to the Glen Farkles trace, and this race is all about Tiger Girl. He's 2 to 1 and he's definitely got the t shirt, as you would say. He's almost a Cheltenham immortal. He's won it so many times over the years, and he's 2 to 1, which is short enough, but you just know Gordon Elliott is going to have him spot on for this race. He posted a Pick a video on Twitter the other day and Tiger looked in very good form jumping a few of the fences over at Cheltenham and I think you'd expect him to be battle hardened and 100% ready for this task. Now he is getting older and you probably would have seen all the things about him not running in the Grand National after being given a handicap mark of I think it was a 162. Well that was a complete joke. He's never going to run in the Grand National off that, uh, off that weight and I fully stick with connections and support them for not running the horse because how the handicappers giving that horse that mark is a joke to be fair but he is a Cheltenham specialist and I think I wouldn't be surprised to see him winning here albeit his form this season hasn't hasn't been great at all it's been pretty disappointing but in years gone by it hasn't been great then he's turned up looking a completely different animal it looks so many with the Gordon Elliott horses who turn up to Cheltenham and are just completely different animals so I think at two to one is short enough against some younger horses the one that JP McManus has just bought is of interest as well but for me Tiger Girl might be Gordon Elliott's best chance of a winner in the full week to be honest. Moving on to a few of the handicaps as well now Gordon Elliott does have a very good record in handicaps I think his targets them from a long way out and gets horses off a nice mark and 100% fit and we'll start off in the Grand Annual where Buddy Rick is 8-1. to one. Now he was much bigger early on in the season, people have tipped him up at 20-1 to one, I think which is a very nice bet to be fair but you can see why he's shortened in the bet and he's got that course form behind third time lucky from the earlier parts of the season. That's very nice form and third time lucky is quite a decent horse and definitely not a handicapper. Then he was fourth in a competitive handicap back over in Ireland and he just seems like the likely type for this race in my opinion. He goes well flush and I think Davy Russell will probably get the ride in an eight to one in a race where there's not many standout horses, quite a few of them of horses that were fancied early on in the season. Well they've gone too high up in the handicap now, so they might be going to other races and I think Buddy Rick at eight to one, I think he's got a rating in the mid 140s we'll see what the English handicapper has to say but at 8 to 1 I'm not going to be tipping him up but you can see why people have fancied him for a long time he looks a very nice horse for Gordon Elliott and you think he's one that might just be better than a mark of what the mid 140s in time and also the Boodles which I'll move on to now now any horse could win this and he has the second favourite the tie turn to who's 5 to 1 and he's got 3 runs now says qualified for his handicap mark he had a nice derby win and he's had two fourths in guided company since and he's the type that seems to have won in all of the right races to be honest he was eight and a half lengths behind Vauban in that race that he won over at the Dublin Racing Festival that seems to be the race that you want to run in to get a nice handicap mark he finished further enough back, far enough back I should say that he's not going to get tortured for that mark but I think that form of that race will and already has worked out pretty strongly I think they've got the triumph hurdle winner who won it so to finish eight lengths off there is pretty decent form and I think in a handicap he could just be one that might be chucked in but also in the boodles every horse is going to be ahead of the handicapper by a pound or two you'd think so you need a horse that is seriously ahead of the handicapper we might need to have a stone in hand to win and this horse might just be one that could go on to better things after a very good run in the boodles he also ran behind that teepahoo the other day if that's how you pronounce it i'm not very sure but he was beaten long far enough that day but i think the only aim of that was just to get the third run so he had to get a mark and after all people are saying that this teepahoo might just be one to challenge Honeysuckle in the champion hurdles. If you take that form literally, then it was a very good run in a very competitive race. I don't think this T-Hapu is getting anywhere near 
in the champion hurdle but I think the form will work out strong enough in the end so he might just be one to follow at five to one in the boodles but as you've seen over the years the second third fourth string of trainers can also surprise and run a shock uh, run a very big race so I think the market will be informative on the day and you might just see a late gamble on a Gordon Elliott horse and that might just be one worth following but in general he might not have the top top horses in any of the big races. I think Galvin, Pied Piper will both run well in the Gold Cup and the final respectively but I think the handicaps is where you want to look out for this um, look out for Gordon Elliott who has been in very good form the past couple of weeks and you think you'd expect him to have a very big Cheltenham Festival especially in the handicaps. Thanks a lot for watching that summarises this video of Gordon Elliott's chances come the festival. If you are new here, do subscribe. We're on a big push to 200 after reaching 100. And if we can get on our way to that before the Cheltenham Festival, I'll be a very happy man. So thanks a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.